What's up everyone? Cool video today. I want to talk about Marvel 107, not Marvel 108, which in May was the first new EU story in print in five years. I want to talk about Marvel 107, but not the Marvel 107 you think I'm talking about. I'm talking about the lost Marvel 107. See, it turns out when Marvel was canceled in 86, issue 108 wasn't the only thing it turns out we lost. Um, there had actually been a version of 107 that had been um, promoted and previewed that apparently disappeared when Marvel 107 finally came out. It didn't really bear any resemblance to the story we were promised. And where were we were promised? Well, in a very obscure place, in Marvel Age 41, which makes this a very worthwhile uh, bit of, uh, of, you know, collectible for EU fans. Um, Marvel Age was a comic magazine that Marvel published back in the good old days, in the 80s and early 90s. Letters to the editors, columns about comic characters, um, lots of different features, but primarily previews of upcoming titles. Uh, let me read the blurb for the upcoming Star Wars 107. It says, sometimes a reputation can hurt more than it helps. That's what Luke Skywalker discovers when he lands on a frontier style, wor style world and discovers everyone is out to become the, known as the man who shot Luke Skywalker. Um, doesn't really sound like the Marvel 107 we ultimately got. But what's really neat about this, and I'm just speculating here, is that it actually, to a very small extent, sounds a little bit like something we got finally years later in Marvel 108. And here's why I think that. It talks about a frontier world. So I'm immediately thinking about Westerns and things like this, right? And that phrase, the man who shot Luke Skywalker, as some of you guys know, the character Valance, who appeared you know, throughout the Marvel run, who was a primary character in Marvel 108, um, was very likely named after the old movie, the man who shot Liberty Valance. Years later, when Jason Fry was doing some work with the character at Wizards of the Coast, he actually gave him a first name, which he'd never had in the Marvel days. Uh, and that name is Bylert, Bylert Valance. Bylert comes from the old movie, Liberty Valance. Bylert's just an anagram for liberty minus the, minus the Y. So you start putting these things together, right? Like in 1986, there was an idea that the 107 was going to be about the man who shot Luke Skywalker. Well, that was maybe going to be Valance, who after all was, you know, via inspiration, the man who shot Liberty Valance, right? So... Again, I'm totally just reading between the lines, but it in some ways makes what we got in 108 that much cooler, right? Not only was 108 a great story and, and you know, again, just I thought was totally satisfying really in every respect, but more than anything, it was, um, it, it, it paid such, you know, care to the continuity of the broad expanded universe. But what's neat about this subtle reference to what we might have gotten with the original 107, it makes me think that it's a direct connection to those original plans. So yeah, Marvel Star Wars 107, it falls in this unique category of Lost EU where it's like, there are some things that we, we were promised and never got, some of which is more tangible than others, right? Like you can go and read Heart of the Jedi which was a commissioned book with art that never got published, but nonetheless is now available at StarWarsTimeline.net. There's other things like Escape from Dagoo, which we know were finished with artwork that unfortunately we'll just probably never see. There's other things that we were promised, but probably didn't get very far in production, like the novel Blood Oath or the novel Sword of the Jedi. And then there's something like the original Marvel 107, which just based on the rapid sort of production schedule of comic books, it's extremely unlikely that there's, you know, art out there or even more than just this broad storyline. There's probably not dialogue and stuff like that, but it's still neat to think that like Joe Duffy and others who worked on it, who are still around, probably remember what they wanted to do and makes me think that they might've passed along some of those ideas to the folks involved with 108. So again, at the end of the day, if you're really interested in having the world's most eccentric but complete Star Wars EU collection, Marvel Age 41 is a worthwhile little oddity just for that little tiny nugget about what 107 was supposed to be. Because to my knowledge, I don't think there's really anything else anywhere that's ever talked about what it, um, the 107 we were supposed to get, right? And who knows, maybe someday, maybe if we get Marvel 109, they'll be able to directly tell the story they were hoping to tell way back in 1986.